just a little runaway. Forty-seven years and still I'm on the run, afraid of love I'm keeping God at bay. Spending days in a nightmare ain't much fun. I am just a little runaway. For my misery, always blaming someone else. I'm really into judgment and delay, but only. Hi everybody, it's Calico, and it's Beyond the Body. And I just want to, if you notice, the pictures were different on the intro for today. And I want to thank Melissa Chavez in uh, New Mexico, a friend of mine. Uh, she helped me out on doing that, so thank you, Melissa. And, and Soren, I don't think I ever even <laughs> actually thanked you when you originally did the intro for me. So Soren. I see your picture there, sweet man. Thank you so much for your talents and gifts that you share with so many. Anyway, today I have another doodly. <laughs> and the good news is my, my skill level is getting far greater with doodly. And I have been able to slow it down so you won't, I don't need the computer to stop it and explain. It's pretty self-explanatory and we'll go over that. And so the topic for today is <clears throat> resurrect your mind. <laughs> it felt appropriate, kind of very thematic. Um, the only thing we can resurrect is our mind. That's it. Holy Spirit will do whatever other resurrections are needed, but the mind, yeah, all I can speak is for myself. It needs help pretty much on a constant basis. So I want to just start by, because there's great misunderstanding about the, the brain versus the mind. And so that's the name of the doodly thing. Um, it's, I'm calling it spiritual neurophysiology. <laughs> figure I'll use my my uh, education somehow anyway it's the brain versus the mind what is it brain mind okay and it, it's actually mentioned in the book the brain and I just wanted to read this short little paragraph because we could probably end the show after this paragraph but I'll show you the doodly and I'll probably have a few other things to say afterwards I'm usually never at a loss for words in this program Anyway, lesson, it's from lesson 92, and the lesson doesn't seem to be, the lesson is miracles are seen in light, and light and strength are one. Now that's beautiful, but that's not really about <laughs> the point of which I'm reading. This is it. You also believe the body's brain can think. If you but understood the nature of thought, you, you could but laugh at this insane idea. It is as if you thought you held the match that lights the sun and gives it all its warmth, or that you held the world within your hand, securely bound until you let it go. Yet this is no more foolish than to believe the body's eyes can see and the brain can think. <laughs> I feel like I want, you know, da -da 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 music in the background on this. You know, I've always thought the brain could think. Well, why wouldn't it? I mean, that's why it's there. But no, in a moment, we're going to go and see this doodly, and it'll explain things, and then we'll even clarify them after. So I'm going to turn it over to Ken, our lovely assistant, and he's going to put on the doodly. <laughs>
you know, I, I have to say, I'm, I was watching it, editing it myself, and it's, I'm accepting the atonement. You see, you can accept the atonement, and no one even know, needs to know you're doing it. It's kind of like the Kegels. I've said this many times before. You can Kegel and look normal at the same time. You can accept the atonement and look normal at the same time. And I was editing my editing of someone else's editing. <laughs> Anyway, um, so basically, we're just, you know, this is this thing we call our form, our body, is really nothing more than a cell tower. <laughs> they all look different, and it's, you know, it's a rather ingenious device for a, a design for a cell tower, but that's all we are. The brain inside the skull just functions the body. Temperature, hormones, um, digestion, all our senses are there. You know, the optic lobe is, is where we probably store pictures, but that we don't even know at this point. Neurology, even though they're the prima donnas of all the physicians, know very little. <laughs> and yet it's a hugely respected science but all it does is move the body it, it's proprioception and vestibular action the senses taste sight smell hearing <clears throat> that's all it is it functions it's a it's a perception machine we're perception machines now the problem is <laughs> the problem is where, where the cell tower kind of went wrong <laughs> is that we started judging that which we are perceiving. So basically the brain and the optic lobe of the brain, we're just seeing lessons one through three. This is, you know, I don't know about you, but lessons one through three, I almost quit. Well, I think I probably did quit A Course in Miracles several times just reading the first three lessons. I thought this is insane. <laughs> I, you know, this makes no sense. And the reason I was having such a hard time with lessons one through three, they're dealing with just perception, just pure perception, no judgment, not good, bad, up, down, right, wrong, nothing. And that's really what we're being asked by God as being communication devices. We're to per just perceive and not judge. The problem is, you know, as soon as, you know, little babies are born and they, you know, they're uh, uh, and then all of a sudden they see their hand. It's like, oh my God, it's attached, it's me. Then we become a me. Then we're picking out all these thoughts of who we are. We have all these self-concepts of who we want people to think us to be. You know, oh, I'm pretty, oh, I'm nice, oh, I'm kind, <laughs> oh, I'm an asshole, whatever the perception, whatever the judgment is. And so we attach, we take these thoughts, and it's only one mind of thoughts. No one has had ever a new thought. Even Einstein didn't have new thought. It was just, he was picking out the less thought ones. And so we're putting, pulling these thoughts from the, the waves. And if you can see this in, you know, with it. I, I'm a scientist. I mean, that was my, my other life in this life. And, you know, even in science, you know, whether they're waves or particles, there's much judgment <laughs> about it. They can't decide if it's a particle or a wave. Does it really matter? You know, it's kind of like one book or four books. Does it really matter? Pick one. Read it. <laughs> Use it. It's like this is where we have to do the self-study part. It's like, oh, I'm thinking a thought. Oh. And then we have the ability to change our mind about what we're thinking. But this was never, well, I should say, I'm only speaking for myself. I was never taught. Well, honey, you can change that thought. <laughs> no, it was like, oh, I'm so sorry, you're sick, or oh, I'm sorry that you had a bad day, you know, whatever. There was a lot of collapsing, a lot of codependent collapsing in on whatever judgment I had of the perceived moment I was in. 
Now, here's a whole, and this is the upside down and the flip that we're doing. And this is, you know, uh, Spiri, I know I see <laughs> Carolina in there. Spiri and the 30-day program will help start this process. It challenges you to identify that you have a thought. And there may be a feeling attached to it, which means there's some kind of belief within that whole mechanism. So you've had this thought for so long and it's looped so many times, you now have a rut in your, your normal flow. And ruts kind of, you know, I remember skateboards. Remember skateboards? <laughs> the early ones had metal wheels and they'd hit any little tiny itty bitty pebble and they'd stop and you'd go flying. And that's what these ruts do. They're, you know, we should be radio antennas just picking up waves. Instead, we have these beliefs and they're just like those skateboards. They just screech to a halt and then we suffer in some way by flying off of them. So this is where we need to start looking at, I'm having a thought and then unwinding the thought. And that's where time really goes into reverse, quite frankly. As you go through this process, and, and I'm aware of it more and more and more, as I start taking these individual thoughts and unwrapping them, it takes me back to another time, moment in time that I wasn't healed. And I'm in the process of healing it now. And so this, it's a very simple process. And once you get the process, it's like a Kegel exercise. You can do it anywhere. No one knows you're doing it. You can be in a party, you can be out driving in traffic, and you can be unwinding your mind at the same time, being very conscious in the present moment. Probably more so than if you're picking out thoughts to judge different pictures that you have in mind. Because all the memories that we have are, are pictures with a judgment attached. And it doesn't matter if it's a good picture or a bad picture, there's still judgments and we still need to unwind them. Because then you see these pictures, okay, so there's a picture of a happy Christmas, okay? You have a picture of a happy Christmas in your memory banks. So you have happy and the picture of the Christmas collapsed. Then you come into another Christmas, you have an expectation because in your memory bank, you're holding it with happy, happy and Christmas. And then you go into the next Christmas and it's not happy. Well, then your expectations have been dashed and you suffer. So, I mean, all these things have to be unwound and it is a process. And I, I just honor those in the 30 day program because they're really, they're digging deep. They're going for the gold is all I can say. And it's not like they even have to dig. They're just recognizing they're having all these thoughts. And when you first start acknowledging you're having thoughts, it's a bit overwhelming because quite frankly, I never thought about thoughts. <laughs> it just never occurred to me. I was thinking it was so automatic. It was like background noise. I have thoughts, but I had judgments about everything, but I didn't even know that because I couldn't even see that I was thinking them. So once you start this process of really getting back to pure perception, just a picture, a picture of a bunch of people smiling in a Christmas tree, pure perception, don't make it mean anything. It's not good or bad. It's not right or wrong. And this is with everything, absolutely everything. And, it, and that's where it feels overwhelming at times. And this is where I really acknowledge the 30 day program, the folks that are doing it, they're sticking with it. And it's like, and all I can say with is join the 30 day program, sign on for the Facebook group. There are so many mighty companions really going for their thoughts, you know, really nailing their thoughts. It's like, oh my God, I found out I was thinking this. And then several other people come in, I think that too. Well, guess what? It's one mind of thoughts. They're waves. They're everywhere. You know, you're either on the suffer channel or the love channel. And if you're on the suffer channel, guess what? You're not happy. But if you switch to the love channel and you look at those thoughts as they're coming in, well, that's not a very loving thought. Great. Change your mind. Choose another option. And if, if it's hard for you to do, if you have some emotions coming up, great. 
because that means it's a deeply embedded belief. And so once you have the express the feelings and you're able to own, this is my projection. And this is the belief that, that I attach to that picture, whatever it is. You know, have you ever wondered why certain people get attracted to the same kind of people all the time? Well, it's the same thing. They're wanting it to look a certain way. And, you know, I, I love, I, I see Tamara and Eric are out there somewhere in the ethers. Um, Tamara had a, a beautiful uh, comment. She was talking about relationships. Relationships are just healing opportunities. This is where you get to look at yourself in a very up close and personal way. So everything, every single thing is for our healing. I mean, I had a woman write to me and I'm going to address this at some point on one of the future programs, if there are any future programs, um, pain. You know, how about really, really bad pain? feels really, really real. <laughs> and that's why I'm going to plug rethinking sickness. If you believe you can, your body can experience pain in any way, emotional or physical, rethinking sickness might be a program you might want to sign up for. We start unwrapping that one because we think this body is real. We don't see it as the cell tower. It is. It's a simple cell tower quite harmless. Birds love it. You know? But we made it mean so much. Oh no, I need to be a kind person. I need to not be an angry person. I need to be a loving person. I need to be a caring person. Oh my God. <laughs> I get tired just thinking about it. <laughs> I mean, I have expectations of myself that are so far greater than any expectations out there. And it's because I've made this concept, this cell tower, into something that needs to be a certain way. And quite frankly, go out and look at a cell tower sometime. They don't care what they look like. They don't care. And that's really where I really am going is in a very, and this is, you know, can be heard in a couple of different ways. I want to get to the point where I don't care. And it's not like I wouldn't, if someone were needing assistance in front of me, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to help them. But it's not like I'm driven, you know, as a chiropractor. I was driven to help people. And it was a hard concept to let go of. Well, then if I'm not helping people, then what good am I? And it's like, and these are all these layers of mind that we really have to unravel. And the way to it is to really start separating out some of the things. I am not my thoughts. I mean, right now, there's an orange wall. There's all of you. I'm sitting here. I can feel my breathing. There's hot lights on me. <laughs> you know, and hot is a judgment. So I'm just saying, I'm right now kegeling my mind. <laughs> healing whatever judgment I just made. And it's like, and that's how easy it becomes at some point. And I'm not, you know, I'm certainly not in a resurrected state yet, but I am in the process of knowing how to do this and that I can see when I'm judging. And it's just, oh, well, I'm going to choose, choose again. You know, and when I started this, Holy Spirit helped me see this differently. Um, Holy Spirit, decide for God for me. I mean, I've used a lot of prayer throughout this whole process of just really bringing myself back to a neutral place. And Lesson 16 said all those thoughts, because one through three is dealing just purely perception. And those three lessons drove me nuts because they made no sense to me. Now, when they started talking about thought, that made more sense to me. I was like, I, I've got thoughts. And, but then I started listening to the thoughts. And then, then there was, I knew there was a lot of work to be done. And that was at the end of the doodly, it was this <clears throat> statement I put up of, you know, once you're aware that you're, once you're more interested in seeing that you're having a thought rather than what is the content of the thought, you've, you found the exit to the maze, you know, game over, you're out of the matrix. 
and then it's just keep working with it. And that's really what the 30 day program is, is like we keep working it, with it. That's the tool of Spiri. Keep working with it. And at some point, even Spiri won't be needed because you'll automatically do these turnarounds yourself. Because it's hard initially to go, oh my God, this is my, my negative thought. You know, no, I know it's out there, you know. Yeah, that's, that's, that's horrible what they did. I can't think of anything right now, but let's just say, oh, there's a war. Oh, that's horrible. Now, guess where the war is? Not here, in the waves that I'm picking. So when I start retraining myself from picking the suffering waves to picking loving ones, it gets easier and easier. This is a skill. What David has talked about in Unwind Your Mind and all of his books is, is really a skill that we're all attempting to, to learn. And it's so much easier doing it together. I mean, I love being around people that are doing it just because they're sharing their process helps me with my process. And I find that's what's happening in the 30-day Facebook group. So I really invite you. The next one is May 6th that we're doing, June 1st for Rethinking Sickness. And that'll be a... That'll be a much deeper process. I just you know, need to say, we're gonna be challenging um, some of your bigger beliefs. And so think about taking on, and the 30-day program is free. You can't even use your lack of money as an excuse <laughs> until you see that you're projecting lack of money and then it really gets, oh my God, why would I do that? Yeah, that's pretty much this whole process. I am insane. You really get to see your insanity. And, you know, that's a gift. It really is at some point. So um, use the tools that Living Miracles has. You know, all these Sunday programs, they're for you to help you see individuals taking on their insane thoughts and unwrapping them and seeing the beliefs underneath them and really coming out the other side of it. And uh, so I just invite you to take on this self-study. This is not about reading a book. This is not about isolating. This is about going about whatever you do and really looking at your mind as you do it because there is a way out of this maze and uh, it's exactly what you think and you, you don't know that you're thinking it until you do. So um, for today, I say resurrect your mind. You know, resurrect, see a thought. See a negative thought and don't let it just loop away because it does mean something. And if you can catch it and change your mind about it, pick up one of those loving thoughts in the ethers, you're healing your mind. And over time, I'm guessing, we'll all become Jesus. Wouldn't that be nice? I mean, you know, with my particular looking cell tower. <laughs> so anyway, for today, folks, all I can say is, I love you. I love you because I love me. And um, that is starting to be my favorite projection. So um, just have a blessed day of resurrecting your mind and finding one little tiny icky thought that you can work with and play with. Don't pick the big ones, just a hint. If you have real big issues going on, avoid those. That's not where you start. You start with the next door neighbor was up at eight o'clock in the morning mowing their lot yard. That's the one you want to start with, okay? Then you'll learn the skill with some simple issues and then you can move on to the bigger ones, okay? So for now, happy bunny day, everybody. I love you all. Till next week. <laughs>